Great morning, great morning, great morning, rise and shine. It's another day that the Lord has made, and I'm truly talking about the Lord has made. I've got a wonderful show coming up because I have a woman of God that is with me today. I've been telling you all about this woman of God who's going to be on the show. Well, she's here today. She's a national author, evangelist. She's a mother of Zion in Zion, and she loves the Lord, and she's going to talk with us, hang out with us here on the Treva Show. She's my special guest today, none other than the powerful woman of God, evangelist Beverly Broadus Green is with me today. She's the mother of Snoop Doggy Dog, as known as Snoop Dog. Uh, please welcome <laughs> Evangelist Green. Great morning to you, thank woman you. of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, man, I am so honored. I'm so honored. I'm so honored to have you on my show. All right, now. Praise God. Well, you, I'm honored to be here. Well, thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to yeah. talk all about about we're going to talk about your son and talk about a lot of great things this morning. But um, tell yeah. everyone where you're from, uh, Evangelist. I'm, I was born in Macomb, Mississippi. All right, so you're a Southern girl from Mississippi. Well, kind of, kind of sort of. We moved to California. I was twelve. Wow. I was 12 years old, yes. Okay. Yes. I love it. I love it. Well, I know that you are an author as well, and uh, you have several books that's out. You've got The Real Love, Real Love too. and is there another book also that you have? Well, they, we got to do a Real Love. Let's see. Real Love too. It's the steps to real love, and I think we're going to have about 22 steps to real love. And it's like joy, peace, happiness, faith. It just go on and on. And I break everyone I'm down with a scripture to back it up. And so we're working on that one. It hasn't been released yet, but we've been working on it. All right. Well, I tell you what, God is good. God is great. He's good all the time. Yes, I'm so happy. Is. Like, I just feel the joy of the Lord uh, with me today. I'm so, I thank God so much for you because we've been communicating thank here you. or there about this interview. And of course, your son, everyone knows Snoop Dogg. I mean, he is an international <laughs> rapper, but he's your son. Yes. He's your son. So, what yes. would you like to say about your son, Snoop Double D O Double G? <laughs> Well, one thing about it, he was always the comedian in the family. Okay. And he could say things, and I would laugh. His brother would laugh. And I knew he was going to be something. But I didn't know it was going to be this powerful. And when I did find out, I was shocked. And to see him, this boy ain't even afraid to be before people, just like his mama. <laughs> I don't care if it's 2,000. I will stand up. I'm going to preach the word of God. Yes, ma'am. I ain't going to let nobody take my joy from me. I'm going to preach good. I'm going to preach when it's bad. I'm going to preach, preach, preach. And so I said all of that to say, God gave me a word yes. for my son. Okay. And this been this has been about maybe 10 years ago. And I went to his house. I said, let me tell you something. I said, I want you to look me straight in my eyes. I said, God's got a calling on your life. Me? I said, yes, you. What you mean? You gonna be a preacher? You gonna preach the word of God? He said, well, what about my wife? I said, he didn't give me a word for her. He gave me a word for you. I said, as time goes on, you go to Philly, and I've been noticing when he told me about the gospel album. Bible and he wanted of me love. to come over. Come on. Yes. Bible of love. And he wanted me to come over there and listen to it. And I was so blown away. I'm like, all the things that I ever taught him, I can see it now. Wow. Because, you know, I raised my children by myself with the help of my mother and father and my siblings. They helped me. And so it wasn't hard because I have five brothers so they could be the men in their lives. Yes. You know, show them. How, and I could just do what I could do. And I tell you, when I heard it, I just broke down. Mm. And it was people that were being so critical. 
How you gonna be smoking dope, man? He play gospel. God can change anybody. Come on he now, wants to. come on now. Any time, any place, and anywhere. Now, why y'all worried about him? Worry about your own children. Woo, woo, pray Jesus. for your own children. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, tell me and what he, kind of. My God, woman of God, what kind of prayers were you sending up at that time when you, the, throughout the years when you were praying for him? What were some of the things? Because we have some mothers out there, some fathers, and they yes. say, Lord, my child, they're doing this and they're doing that. And I don't, people say that, you know, my child is not yes. representing you. And so they're worried. Uh -huh. But what, what kind of prayers? What did you pray, woman of God? I prayed. See, he loved money. And uh, he used to deliver newspapers. And then he started working at the grocery store. And then he went on wherever. But every time I go to the Father, I place my children before God. Mm -hmm. And I tell God, don't judge them. Judge my life. Because, see, I know how I'm living. They got to get where I'm at. And that's daily, just praying that God would keep them covered to the top of their heads, to the sole of their feet, cover them inside and outside. And God gave me a word for him. Mm. He said, tell him, you can have security. He said, but by your mama being a friend mother, things are happening around you, but they will not touch you. Now you tell me, am I right or am I wrong? Don't, nobody bothers him because he's covered. I prayed that prayer for him. God continues to cover him because jealousy, play haters, is out there. But all they see now is the good in him. And I'm grateful because God it won't be alone now. He's going to preach the word. He's going to, and you he are, gonna preach the word. he's going to preach the word. Bible of yes. Love, I tell you, I love uh, the entire album. And oh, there's a one particular, Bishop Rance Allen, I had the opportunity to interview oh, him. I, I had the opportunity, oh, really? Mother, to interview him uh, several months ago. Uh -huh. And uh, it was just a blessing how that all came together. He said that he had written that song, uh, Blessing Me, many years ago, like 15 years ago. And the Lord had said this song is for Snoop Dogg. He said, who? He said Snoop Dogg, so he put it on the shelf. He didn't even know oh, wow. what God was going to do with that. And years later, they said there was a call and it was Snoop Dogg uh -huh. on the line. And he wanted to get in touch with Bishop Rance Allen. And he told him about oh. what God is doing in his life. And he asked him yes. to come to the studio. And when he heard Ooh. that song, Blessing Me Mother, your son said, he said, that's it. That's the song. So I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm literally just overwhelmed. You know, I was on my treadmill several months ago. I didn't know you. I have not met you. But several months ago, I was working on, on my treadmill and God had just placed your son in my heart. I'm saying God has a plan for your son's life. He is moving. Yes. Yes. God is good. Oh, God is good. He received the star on the Walk of Fame. The star? Oh, my God. Oh, I just was so proud of him. I said, baby, I said, I'm so proud of you. I said, I knew you were going to be somebody. But what? I didn't know. Because I thought, well, you know what? I figured it was going to be in music. And the reason I say that is because we organized a choir at the church. And he was one of the lead singers. Oh, my goodness. And, and my mother recorded it, and after she moved back uh, to, uh, to Mississippi, she misplaced it, but she had it. I mean, you wouldn't believe that. That was him. His voice was strong, and he led his son in the choir, So, and he was the choir rehearsal. So, it, you know, it was something about music, because that's the way my life has been. It's been surrounded with music all my life. All of my life. Wow. I mean, I directed a choir for 25 years. I was the president for 20 years. I'm telling you, I was a choir member for over 40 some years, longer than anybody in the choir. Wow, so I didn't music, know that. I did not know that. The music is there. The music is there for us. You know, it's just something about that music. Well, you know, I heard that they say that music will stick with you longer than anything. 
I've heard it's that so as easy. well. It'll stay with you. And my whole life, I joined the church when I was five years old. I sung in the choir when I was five years old. And when we came to California, we joined the church. And I was in the choir. <laughs> oh I was in the choir. And even in school, I was in a choir. And so that was a part of my gift that God blessed me with. And I passed it on to him. Yes, you did. And, yes, you did. He wouldn't be where he is me, today if it were not for you. Talk about that. Thank Talk, you, come Lord. on. Thank come, you. And Jesus now, because I know y'all are listening. Yes. And you love to shoot folks down. You'll say, now, nah, what is she? No, it was you, you played a great role in his life. Yes, yes, I did. And see, when God saved me, I was 28 years old. And I had been saved at seven years old. But we came to California, and I backslid, it, okay? And we went to church, Bible study, Sunday school, mission meeting, and all of that. Okay, when I got eight years old, I started feeling, I need you to save me. I said, you know, you said somewhere in your word, you said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, mm. and the door shall be open. I had been partying that night, and when I got saved, I had liquor all up to me and everything else. But you know what? Ooh. From that <laughs> point on, I had the choice oh, my Lord. to be saved or kill my baby daddy. Jesus. And you know what I did. I said, I will be saved. Let him live and let me live. My son got a mama and he got a daddy. And that's a blessing. And so with me, I just was so dedicated to being in the grace of God. I was just so involved. People talked about me at the church because I was one of the youngest ones that got saved. And they was talking, oh, she ain't got nothing. She was partying with us two or three weeks ago. But I ain't worried about the past. I'm worried about now. Okay. And before it was all over, them folks got saved too. Look at God. Look at God. Well, I tell you what, everyone, we're going to go to a break here. We're going to play some uh, great music by Snoop Dogg, Bible of Love. And also we're going to take a break for our sponsors. But we're so grateful that Evangelist Brought His Green, Beverly, is joining us today. And we're going to come back with more. So don't touch that dial. Uh, you're listening to The Trevis Show. That's right, WVWB Radio and also 105.5 The Bull FM. And, and we'll be right back after this. All right, we are back. Yes. Thank you so much, woman of God. Are you having a great time on the show this morning? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I tell you what, can yes. you tell us, I tell you, you know, we call him Snoop Dogg. What do you call your son? Like when you go over to his house and your visit, or he's over to your home, what do you call him and what does he call you? Oh, well, see, when my children, were well, those two, which was Jerry, the oldest, and Snoop, and they used to call me Beverly. And then when he got famous, he started calling me Mom. Now, we nicknamed him Snoopy. Ooh. Okay? Snoopy off of Charlie Brown. And he kept that name until he got famous. And he dropped that Y and did Snoop. And that's how they came about. And he calls me Mom. Now, if he's in trouble, I ask, I say, Mr. Man, so you grow older than I am. And he know exactly what it means. And it's been years and years ago, but he still, he still know when, when I say that to him, that I mean business. So they all call me mom. Wow. All the that is... Even his friends, everybody that hang with my son, they call Mama Beverly, Mom Beverly, Mom. I got so many kids. <laughs> So I mean, it, it just daughters. and you. I mean, you're blessed because of your children. Your children rise up and they call you blessed. I've seen interviews where Snoop yes. was thanking God. He was so grateful for his mother, for you, and uh, it was like, wow. I saw one, and you love your hats. I saw a video out there. He, I think he was saying, Mom, why do you have that hat on or something? So talk about these hats of yours, woman of God. Do you wear hats like every day? <laughs> no, my was well, he actually when my husband passed. I was like a grieving a widow. And so I started wearing hats. And I was preaching and everything, but 
I would only do it at certain times, you know, when the pastor asked me to, and I'd go up there and preach. But I like hats because my mother and my baby sister, they instilled that within me because they were hat wearers, you know, and we used to get hats. I sent them to my mom. I said, you like this, you like that one. I sent them to my sister and my hats. It just represents a woman after God's own heart. That's evangelist, Beverly Brown Street. And I don't wear, I don't wear hats too much now because I'm in the pulpit and I just kind of feel, you know, I'm overdressed because the people are just so plain and simple at the church. So I just try to look, just move on in with them. Wow. <laughs> and be just plain. Wow. Be plain. Wow. Yes. I love that. I love that. I love how God yes. is just moving in your life. When did you feel the call? Yes. You said at 28, the Lord saved you. And is that when you felt the call to ministry? No. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. I didn't. The calling, the calling didn't come until, what, you, oh, 2005. And what happened, I had a prayer partner. And she called me. She said, Sister, Sister Green, <laughs> you got a calling on your life. Oh, my goodness. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, girl, you don't preach the word. I said, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you is. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> I like this being, look, I just like being played. <laughs> and do you know? Oh, my God. He's going to step down from the choir. And God said, no. And my husband, mm. once I accepted my calling, my husband joined church, and everybody was clapping. He asked me at the church, why were they all clapping for me? I said, they were clapping for us. I said, because I needed my husband to go by, you know, be by my side. Yeah. Join church and going to church with me, and honey, you know you preached. I did, yes. So that was in, like I said, in 2005. And he watched how God changed me. 100% to be that woman after God's so hard. And by him seeing me, he seen me every day. Mm-hmm. He seen me every night. He seen the change in me. And that's when he came and gave his life to Christ. Wow. I'm like, Lord, I thank you. And then I went uh, to church. I had missed choirs because I was sick. And they know I was the president. If I'm out, that means I'm sick or I'm doing something. I go to church Sunday. I'm all in my red. I go up in there, they all in black. And that hurted me. Mm. That hurted me so bad. Somebody should have called me and told me. Wow. And then that's when God said, step down, step down, step down. And that's what I did. And that was on January the 9th, 2005. And let me tell you, those same people. I mean, I had family in the church, family in the choir. Nobody even offered me a black outfit. Oh my and my God. sister, my baby sister was so upset, she went to the store, got a navy blue skirt <laughs> and a off a green coat oh, blouse. Wow. And uh and we went back to the store, found a perfect dress. And I asked the lady, could I get dressed? Because we was going back to church. And found the right shoes to go with it. And I went back. And when I got home, and I started doing my letter. And, um, but I kept going to church. I kept going to church. And this one Sunday, Easter, Pastor told me, the, the, the Word of God said, get up. Go down to the pastor right now and let him know who you are. Mm. And I went down. I see my husband coming. I was waving at him saying, don't bother me right now. This is real personal. I went up to Pastor. I said, I just want to let you know that I'm an evangelist. Mm. Ooh, he, that man know he screamed. My God. My Ooh, God. Jesus. My God. Ooh, glory. My God. Glory. And that next Sunday, <laughs> he lied me. Mm. And there were people in there, they got jealous. I'm a, I preach. Well, tell him. And they got to the point where if I had to go out, and preach. They wouldn't even show up. 
And it used to hurt, but it don't hurt no more. No, because you've experienced that. No you've more. experienced things in life where people have said things. You've read things in the paper. You've seen it yes. on the internet. How do you deal with, you know, when you read things about your son, you read things, you see things, and you know your own son, but how do you deal with that as a mother? How do you deal with well, that? Well, I'm just a praying mother. And uh, sometimes I'm home because, you know, I live alone. And sometimes I'm here. And I break down in tears. Oh. And I just said, Lord, you know, touch him. And when he did the gospel, it was one of the uh, singers wanted to talk to me about it. I didn't want to talk to nobody about it because I can't change what God's done. I knew God was working with my son. There was one pastor on there talking about how he going to be doing this, and he doing this, and he's saying this, and the people singing with it. That ain't right. That ain't right. You're so busy over in somebody else's joy. Worry about their busy. You need to worry about your own business Ooh. because my son is covered. Come on now. He's covered. Come on. Because I'm a praying mother. Yes, you I are. I teach my kids under me. I love my son. I love them to death. When I see them, I'm just like a little kid, you know, going to hug them. <laughs> or they come to hug me because mama took care of them. Oh, I did everything that I knew yeah. to do for my children. And so now it doesn't even bother me anymore. Because like Slip said, you know what? We can't stop how people feel about us. No. But we know one thing, as long as we know God is in control, you don't have to never worry about it. And so all them folks that were talking, they shut their mouth up, and they loved it. Tell them, I said, thank God he's changing him. And I'm like, now, hold up. <laughs> and that's what get me. Everybody want to pray for my son. Pray for your own son. Pray for your children. Come on. You know. And when he can't be around, he, listen, this is a grown man. I raised him the right way. And now... I can see the fruits. Yes, you can. I see them. And you spoke that because over his life. And you know what? I love the music. I love what your son is doing. I'm a fan. Yes. And if anyone, this is yes. a gospel radio show. And if anyone is offended, then that's your problem. We thank God that's because right. this is a woman of God who stood in the gap for her thank children. You. And you know what? That's it right. is a blessing that you can see the fruit of your labor. That's right. You can see That's the food. Right. And you know, I have a prison ministry and I've been d going to the uh -huh. prison now serving for about seven years, seven to eight years serving. And there are women who are incarcerated. There are women who are serving two and three life uh -huh. sentences. But to see where Look God has taken your son, I tell you, yes. is, and all of your children, that tells you something about that prayer life yes. of yours. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. And I love it. It, it works. It works. It works. It works. Well, prayer and faith. Prayer and faith. Well, we're mm. going to take a break and work we're going to come back with one more segment. I'm hanging out today or hanging out with me as Evangelist Broadus Green. Are you having a good time, <laughs> Evangelist? Oh, my God. I'm having a good time. Woo! Well, I tell you. We're talking about how good God is. I'm telling you, we're going to talk about that <laughs> and we love the Lord. And when we come back, we're yeah. going to have Evangelist Beverly just encourage you all. We know that it's Christmas time and some of you have have your yes. loved ones some of you don't and we're gonna let her leave you all with a great word of encouragement so hey this is yes. the treva show we're gonna take a break i'm taking a break and we'll be right back after this all, all right. right all right we are praise back god. evangelist green praise god Woo. Yeah. you are a powerful <laughs> anointed woman of god thank god thank god thank god well you know Mama what what you say oh, go ahead on. no go ahead woman of god no, I was saying my mom, she finally heard me preach. And she said, let me tell you something. I don't believe in women's preachers. She said, but you preach the hell out of that sermon. No! <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it. 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 I love it. I love it. So your mother, is is your mother still, she's still in the land of the living? No. Oh. No, my mom went home on February the 25th. 2016 and I miss her so much oh. and you know what I think you know. that's where we're going to go with this you know this year I've encountered mm -hmm. so many uh wonderful people whose mother who has lost a parent someone dear yes. you've lost several people in your life and um it's yes. Christmas time you know it's right around the corner and this is that time of the year oh, where yes. families come together I would like for you to maybe share uh, your experience in dealing with the loss of a loved one and how, and maybe okay. a word of encouragement to encourage someone that's listening for right yes, now. Yes, I will. 
I'll be ready. Okay, well, let's talk about yes. it. So please encourage someone today just with a word. They lost their loved ones. They've lost a loved one. Mm. And maybe they're just not mm. feeling it. What would you like to say to them today? Well, let me tell you something. I used to tell people all the time when they say, I lost my mother and I just can't get over it. And I said, well, just go on and pray about it. But baby, when God took my mama home, I broke down because I did everything I could for my mom. I flew down there. Whenever she needed me, if I had a doctor appointment, I'd go next day, I'd be there with her. And so it's not an easy thing. Uh, you know, like the scripture says, we can men do it for a night, but joy will come in the morning. But see, it don't mean it's going to happen overnight, okay? Because you're going to go through it. You're going to go every day as long as you trust God. He's going to make you stronger. And remember to pray for his grace. Reach for his glory. Honor his word and glorify his name. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things that he's done for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo, Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Wow. My Thank God. You, Lord. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. If you aren't encouraged yes. today, you Lord. better get on get encouraged and Hallelujah. catch on fire because God has Hallelujah. delivered a powerful word through this great woman yes, of God. Lord. And she's there's no yes. stopping. Evangelist brought his green. She is just yes. beginning. And I just thank yes. God for your ministry, woman of God. I thank God how God thank is you. using you in a powerful way to touch yes. lives and change lives. Yes. I thank God for everything that you oh, have yes. had to endure Hallelujah. in your life. For God says your yes, labor Lord. has not was not in vain. Thank it was right. not in vain, That's woman right. of God. Not at all. Woo. Not at all. And if you go on YouTube, uh, you can catch me preaching there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I was in Atlanta, October, I believe it was the 19th. But anyway, it's about a 15 minute, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Wow. Just go on the evangelist Beverly brought a screen on YouTube and it'll bring it right up. All right. right all right. Well, we want you all to catch that <laughs> interview. And hopefully this won't be my last interview with Evangelist Beverly, because I'm telling oh, you, God. I'm excited to just know her. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm so honored. I was crying yes. and everything. I was saying, Lord Jesus, this woman is just touching my heart. But it's been a great show. Yes. It's been a great yes. show. And we do want yes. to thank you for listening. And uh, final remarks, anything, one minute, anything you'd like to say, final remarks. I just say like this, <laughs> reach out and touch somebody's hand because we got to reach out. We got to open our arms and our hands up to receive those that are lost. Stop going to church every Sunday. When you leave out the house, you got a fake face on and you fake all the you go back home. If the man ain't treat you right, get rid of them. And treat your children, talk to your children. I don't care how old they get. Talk to them about what they're going through. We've had too many kids to commit suicide, and it needs to stop. And it starts with the parents. Take out time with your children. Take out time that there is hope. There is hope, and that hope is in Jesus. All right. I pray, I pray, I pray that something was said that would touch hearts and change minds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise All right. Lord. Well, thank you so Praise much, woman of God. Thank you for listening today to the Treva Show. And uh, it's been a great show and we're grateful. Remember to tune in every Sunday. I'm on the radio. That's right. WVWB Radio and also 105.5 The Bull. But this broadcast can be heard and listened to from anywhere from around the world. So I do want to thank all of Amen. my listeners for tuning in. Thank you again for being my guest today, woman of God. You're so welcome. Anytime. All Anytime. right. All right. Well, until okay. next time, keep enjoying Jesus and uh, God bless you. God okay. bless you too, my sister.